the name of the Lord. You're welcome to another wonderful and exciting episode of Life Booster. Now, have you ever heard of the word rebellion? I'm sure many people have heard about rebellion, but have never really, really given it attention. Rebellion is existing across different spheres in the world. Rebellion happens across many parts of our society. There's rebellion in politics. There's rebellion across nations. There's rebellion in family. Even be between a man and his wife, couples, families, many of us do not really, really understand the devastating consequences of rebellion. And sometimes we wonder why the Bible in Exodus 22, 18 says, Suffer not a witch to live. How does this relate? In 1 Samuel 15, verse 23, the Bible says, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And the Lord went further in the, in the Bible to say that because you have rejected me, you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you. Now, I'm talking about self-centered rebellion. Self-centered rebellion. Rebellion is the act of raising resistance against an existing authority. Rebellion is to challenge an existing authority based on certain factors. But I'm talking of self-centered rebellion. And I want to bring this to the aspect that has to do with the children of God. You listening to me now, the children of God, how rebellion happens, how it devastates the organization, the well-being and the peace among the children of God and even among families. Witchcraft is not about flying in the night. People fly at night spiritually because they are witches. They are wizards. But primarily, witchcraft is not flying. Witchcraft is not somebody dressed in black with a tail. Witchcraft is not somebody holding a, a broom and flying with a broom. Or flying on a, a, a broom. That's not witchcraft. Those are manifestations of witchcraft. For example, if you see a particular logo, a particular icon on your phone as a bank app, banking is not witchcraft, but the icon, the app works because it is tied to a bank. Witchcraft is not flying. Witchcraft is not someone dressed in black. Witchcraft is not incantation. Witchcraft is not sorcery. They are able to do those things because they have been installed with witchcraft. Witchcraft is not flying. But when witchcraft is installed in people, they are able to fly spiritually at night. They are able to do a lot of relocation, a lot of manipulation, a lot of control, a lot of killing in the realm of the spirit. Now, the Bible says, rebellion is at the scene of witchcraft. And in the book of Exodus 22:18. The Bible says, don't allow a witch to live. Telling you how devastating their oppressions are anywhere you find them. In the society, in families, in business organizations, in, in, amongst good friends. Once the app, once the application, the software of witchcraft is in existence, there are devastations that must take place. Witchcraft is an irrational spirit. Witchcraft is a controlling spirit. Witchcraft is a wicked spirit. Witchcraft is a spirit that manipulates, dominates, controls. But witchcraft is not, it's not my main focus. My main focus in this discussion is rebellion. Self-centered rebellion. I'm going to quickly, in this broadcast, show you some attributes of rebellion. Some of us... Like I, I mentioned earlier, some of us don't know how devastating, how, how terrible the consequence of rebellion is anywhere it exists. Rebellion will cause marriage to break. Rebellion will cause children to rise against their parents 
and until they see their parents do what they wish, they don't stop. That's exactly the reason why the Bible is equating rebellion, selfish rebellion, to witchcraft. When people rise up against constituted, instituted authority, established authority, for a singular reason of what they want, they are about what they want to see happen, their selfish interest, the Bible says, is as the sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft is about what somebody wants, what somebody wants done, who somebody wants to be hot, who, somebody's want, who somebody wants to pull down. Therefore, the Bible says, self-centered rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Anywhere spouse live together in marriage, in marriage union, and one person has a rebellious spirit, is a rebellious spirit, and anytime you hear rebellious spirit, where one person is determined to carry out what he or she wants, then that marriage is bound to have challenges. That's why the Bible calls it witchcraft. One thing, you wanting to do what you want, you wanting to have what you desire at all costs, irrespective, irrespective of the desire, irrespective of the heart, irrespective of the pain it inflicts on the other party. The Bible says that that act, that rebellion, is as a sin of witchcraft. Anywhere you see rebellion, sniff it, recognize it, and deal with it precisely. Use the word of God, use the wisdom of God, use maturity to locate it and then deal with it decisively. Rebellion is a destructive energy. Rebellion is a destructive spirit. Where it exists, there is no how. It's not going to bring a devastating consequence. I'm going to give to my listeners five attributes of rebellion. Once you see that rebellion in your company, in your organization, in the church, in your family unit, you see it exist, you see it begin to grow between you and your spouse, you need to give attention prayerfully, give attention wisely by the application of wisdom, give attention and see to it that you nip it to the board. Attribute of rebellion. Number one, rebellion is not easily recognizable. It takes understanding the word of God, having values, understanding and deploying principles as a way of life to the suffer, to understand when rebellion is in existence. It is not easy to locate, to recognize rebellion when it starts. Point number two, re those who are rebellious, when they start, they always sell rebellion as though they are fighting for justice, they are fighting for equity, and they are after human rights. Look across the world. Look across our nation. You see people today who were standing as though they were against the government for doing certain things. They were like, like the opposition to the government. But today, they are supporting the very same thing that they once criticized. Why? They were setting up that rebellion, not because they were after justice, equity, or fairness, or human rights. They were simply after a personal desire, personal selfish goal. That is a typical example of rebellion. Point number three, rebellion is not written on the face of those who perpetrate it. Rebellion cannot be seen visibly in the face of anyone. This is the reason why those in church especially, when people begin to tell you things, begin to sell ideas to you, begin to rise against God's instituted authority under the guise and camouflage of fighting for people's rights, trying to do what is right, we all need to be careful. One of the best ways you can locate rebellion is by equating it and balancing it with the word of God. The Bible says, by their fruit, we shall know them. 
check through the Bible. Check, um, check across the world where you have people killed in thousands and in millions. It usually starts with a rebellious person, with a rebellious group. Rebellion is not to be encouraged anywhere it is found, anywhere it is recognized. Rebellion is not written on people's faces. In church, in the family unit, in your business place, you will only recognize, you can only recognize rebellion through the attitude and the behaviors of people. The Bible says, by their fruit, we shall know them. When people are after a cause, without due regard for the word of God, due regard for the pain of other person, then there's a high possibility that the spirit behind such action is the spirit of rebellion. Point number four, people are usually, many innocent victims are usually co-opted into rebellion on our way. They sincerely try to follow, try to drive a course which they usually believe is the right way. They want to fight for justice. They want to fight for liberation, for independence. They want to fight for a just cause. But at the end, most times, selfish rebellion has nothing to do with, with the interest of the generality of the people. Point number five. Rebellion is one of the fastest ways that the devil disconnects people from grace and from help. Rebellion is one of the fastest ways the devil isolates, disconnects people from grace and from hell. Check across the church. Check between masters and, and subordinates. Check between mentors and protégés. One of the fastest ways that the enemy, the devil, disconnects people from grace, from hell, is rebellion. And usually when rebellion starts, the rebel will always think he has a right. Number six, Rebellion is usually underground. The operation of rebellion, when it starts, is usually underground. Rebellion is usually like the effect of termites. They get into the ground, go to the foundation of structures, foundation of buildings, foundation of systems, eat it up from the ground, and then collapse it. Rebellion is usually latent. You need the eyes of the eagle. You need a discerning spirit to understand when rebellion is at work. People may need a leader to be changed. To be changed. They may tell you they don't want this leader. They don't like this leader. They want X, Y, Z person. There's a reason why they don't want this person. In most cases, it's a selfish interest. Praise the name of the Lord. Point number seven. God does not support selfish rebellion. God is not the author of confusion. Where there is confusion, the Spirit of God is usually not present. We must all understand that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. This is a serious analogy. If the Bible says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, if you do not want to see a witch exist, co-opted into your system, in the same way, with the same reaction and response, don't allow rebellion in any system as much as you can. Whatsoever you know can give growth, give energy, give power to rebellion, respond to it immediately and get it resolved. The devil will always invest himself in a system where there is rebellion. Because everywhere there is confusion, Satan loves to dwell there. Thank you so much for listening to me. I pray for you that rebellion will not find access to your family. We don't find access to your marriage. Rebellion will not grow in, in your ministry, in your establishment, in your business, in your organization in the name of Jesus. I agree with you in faith. And I ask that the seeds of rebellion trying to grow in your organization will die in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you that God will grant you a discerning heart. God will grant you his superior wisdom so you'll be able to respond to rebellion, address it, and resolve it properly before it's too late. God bless you. I look forward to you listening to my next broadcast, which is going to be more and more exciting.
remain on top and keep shining.